you know, I thought we were we were we played pretty pretty well in the first half, and then I thought the big play that kind of gave them momentum was the free throw to end the first half. We give up an offensive rebound on a free throw. Um, they kick it out and hit a three. I thought that was huge. That gave them some momentum going into the locker room. And then all we talked about at the half was just, hey, we got to come out. We got to be aggressive. You know, it's, this this lead can evaporate. We got to be aggressive. Stay aggressive. Stay aggressive. Stay aggressive. And sure thing, it evaporated, right? And um, but I, I thought that just our guys finding a way to win that game, making plays when they needed to make plays. Obviously, CJ and Greg gave us a huge lift off the bench, um, which is what we needed, you know, and just finding ways to take care of the ball with the game on the line, make free throws when the game's on the line, and, and close it out. Do you think the way Greg shoots the ball kind of sneaks up on people? Because he doesn't fit the profile of a guy who looks like a great shooter, but it seems like he's always able to find and knock down the, the important ones. And Noah said to him in the first half, we ran a middle pick and roll, and, or middle pick and pop, and he popped back and Noah threw it to him. Noah said to him in a timeout, shoot that ball, please. Shoot it, shoot it, you're open, shoot it. He's a good shooter. Greg doesn't doesn't take bad ones either, you know, which um, he doesn't try to force it. When he gets his feet set, when he's wide open, he, he can drill shots, you know. And uh, obviously he's been battling a little bit of a hand issue there and just continues to be a warrior and go out there and compete. And um, like we talked about last week in St. Joe's, he gets hit on the hand and then ends up somehow getting a rebound while his hand was hurting him that bad. I, you know, but um, – he was he. I thought the lift that him and CJ gave us, especially in that run in the second half, where they tied it, and then we made some plays. Rich made a big three, um, but I thought those guys gave us gave us a really good lift. CJ's been averaging, I think it's five and a half points in the eight games before this one. What made this game different in terms of getting him back and scoring goals? I just think he's a talented player. Um, we continue to challenge him on the defensive end of the floor, just with his effort, you know, and his. Also taking care of the ball, you know. Um, he had some turnovers or had a big turnover there against St. Bonaventure, but just, you know, hey, no live ball turnovers. And his offense is going to come. He's a, he's a terrific offensive player. He's really, really talented. And, you know, I'm, uh, the 18 is the 18. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of him for that, but I'm more proud that he went out and grabbed eight rebounds. And he had some big ones when the game was on line. Well, I think he also made some of the impacts defensively as well, especially I'm remembering late, the late blocks. And yeah, huge block, huge. Had a big steal, big block. Um, had a great pass on an assist. He was making the right play on off. He should have had three or four assists. I thought we missed some wide open shots off his playmaking. You know, um, he he played. He was terrific today. Well, yeah. Does it feel like you guys? It, it seemed like you guys were passing the ball and moving the ball and sharing it better than the assist total. Show. I totally agree with that, Kyle. I thought I thought our our ball our intent on offense was was to make the right play. I thought we that was our intent and um, you know, uh, so we just, we missed some some open looks, but I didn't think we were forcing threes. You know, what were we versus St. Bonaventure? 16 for 33. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of threes. We only took 19 today. I thought the free throw margin and us not settling, right? They switch pick and rolls a lot, so Clifton Moore is on a guard a lot of times out there, and our guards didn't settle and just bomb shots. They put pressure on the paint and at the basket, and we did a good job getting to the foul line. Yeah, going off that, you guys got to the free throw line 13 times in the first half, and you didn't even attempt your, I guess, first free throw until like six minutes around in the second half. What did you see out of LaSalle that they did a better job of in the second half defensively, not allowing those chances to the line? Well, I think they're, they're obviously aggressive. Um, I mean, Clifton Moore and, and Jack Clark are, are, are terrific. You know, those two guys. Um, Clifton just, just impacts the game in so many different ways, and he's just a presence when you're going down the lane. You know, you, you're, you're kind of like Osun, like you, you're wondering where is he, right? Like he's going to come over and block. Um, I just thought, you know, their, their aggressiveness there, um, you know, t turning it up a notch, and we knew they were. We knew they would respond. Coach Howard's teams always always do. He gets... He gets them to play with that aggressiveness, and um, you know, I, I, I thought, I thought we didn't come out of the locker room the right way, um, and I was concerned. I was concerned walking up the tunnel when, you know, we gave up. I thought that offensive rebound at the foul line, two or three, was was huge. And um, but even when they tied it, we we, we kept battling, and, and proud of our team for how they responded there. Clifton Moore um, had a big big role in allowing them to to charge back into the game. What was the difference between you guys being able to neutralize him for zero points in the first half and then him getting 16 in the 
Yeah, I mean, he finished in and around the basket. He had a huge three with the game on the line. He makes tough shots. I thought the layup he made going to the rim was all world. You know, I mean, it was, it was a tough shot to make. Um, we doubled him early. I thought he did a good job in the second half of passing out of double teams. I mean, he had four assists. A lot of that's because we didn't want him. He's too good of a player to just play one-on-one. We were doubling him. And then our rotations in the first half out of the double, you know, you're down – in front of our bench, so we can help you, you know, you know, scream, rotate, but you know. and then uh, I thought he did a good job passing out of it. We were just a split second late on our rotations in the second half. Last night, look, everyone who got in the game scored. Yeah. How did that balance contribute to what you guys, the way you guys responded today? I, I just think it's the way that you should always look down how I think the game should be played, and I'm, uh, you know, just this is just my opinion. I think the best teams that I've ever been fortunate enough to be a part of, whether it was at Florida, Chattanooga, have, there's always been great balance. And there's always been five, six guys that average double figures. You know, the 29-win team at Chattanooga, I think my leading score was like around 12 or 13. But we had seven guys anywhere between 8 and 13 points. Like, just balance. You know, there's too much firepower out there for us to not have balance, you know. and. You look down here, you got 12, 10, 17, 10, 18. I mean, that's that's great balance across the board, you know. Um, and again, like celebrating each other's success, right? Like, you know, um, Trent, I'm sure, feels like he didn't play as well as he normally does for us, or, or, you know, especially offensively. But, you know, Greg goes out there and gets 10. Instead, you know, celebrating your teammate, you know, um, same thing, you know. TJ didn't have his best offensive game, didn't didn't get a ton of clean looks and but CJ, you know, has a really good game and, and just just celebrating each other. I, you know, I think that's that's what it's all about. I know I've asked it somewhat in the past, but um, CJ getting eight rebounds and then you going with that um, lineup at the end of the game, that small ball lineup with Greg kind of basically as the five, CJ's the four. How much comfort does you knowing his ability to get rebounds in like, yeah. allow you to well, actually, it's, it's I keep him at the three. I, I put Weeks at the four, um, and he matches up with the team's power forward, you know, because uh, he he does a great job rebounding for us too, right? Um, but both of them out there, just being physical. You, you go back to the Rhode Island game; those those two guys, just physicality for us, where it was outstanding. But yeah, I mean, there like like we said, CJ had some huge rebounds. He had a huge block, you know. Um, it's not the 18 for me. It's more of, of those effort plays that, that we continue to challenge him to make. One more for Coach. Points in the paint was such a big thing today compared to uh, – yeah, Say that again. Points in the paint. Yep. Uh, really big thing today for, uh, for you, Matt, compared to like how they've been in the past, the finishing around the basket mm-hmm. and getting to the lane. Mm-hmm. What do you, what, did you tell something to the guys that made that different today? I thought Steady had great poise down there. I thought his jump hooks in and around the basket were, were terrific. Obviously, we made layups, you know. Um, but Steady's poise when he when he caught it, I thought was really big. I think that's, you know, that's been a stat too to pay attention to when we have more points in the paint than the opposing team. I think mo- nine times out of ten this year we've won, so I think that's a that's a big stat to pay attention to. But I thought guys, you know, finished in and around the basket. I mean, the and one that CJ had. I mean, that was he had that same play at the end of Rhode Island. He did the exact same thing, and it rimmed out. But he didn't get a foul call. He, you know, he did it today, and, and it went in, and it was an and one big. I mean, the dunk he had off the offensive rebound in the first half, just we, that's the aggressiveness we, we, we want him to, to play with. Go ahead. Um, you had one of the uh, last few seconds of the game that Noah went down. I think it was holding it because his left wrist. Do you have any update or anything on that um, potential injury thing? No, I mean, he, he's celebrating in the locker room with his teammates. Uh, he'll get treatment today. He'll get treatment with our trainer tomorrow. And... Um, you know, I'll, I'll get more of a clear answer. I, you know, I listen. I go speak to the team, radio straight here. So I'll get that answer when I head back up the the tunnel there. Great. Thanks, coach. Thanks, guys. I think the ball can surprise people sometimes because especially those back to back threes that you hit. It seems like they weren't ready for you to pull up like that. Um, I say yeah because I don't shoot them often, but when I do, I feel like I make them a lot and I work on them. So why not? And it felt like was that an important part of the game when you guys because it. You guys had the big lead, then they had fought all the way back. Was it important to just kind of reestablish yourself a little bit and get a little more breathing room? Yeah, because we knew like this is a must-win game. It's our next game, so we felt like we got to keep playing hard. We had to grind that one out, and I know if, if I had to shoot it, it had to go make. If not, they was on a run. We had to stop their run. CJ, um, I think 
think you were averaging five and a half points to eight games before this one. So what does it do for your confidence to have an 18-point game like this? Um, well, I'm a very confident player, so, you know, um, I guess it helps, you know, especially having my teammates around me, especially this guy always telling me to shoot the ball. I go 0 for 30, he like, shoot, just keep shooting, you know. So, I mean, a game like this does help, and, you know, I guess it gives me more confidence, and the coach is more confidence to keep calling my number to produce. Your, your rebounding numbers have been up, I think, I feel like more of the second half of the season. Did something switch for you, like, whether it was, like, the way you game planned or just something mentally where you just wanted to grab more boards? Um, I remember when I was out, I missed a few games because of an injury. Um, the coaches kept harping on, we don't rebound enough. And they keep they challenge me every game. CJ get ten boards, and my bigs don't like it because I be stealing theirs. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, me and TJ, you know, as the bigger guards, JG, we try to put emphasis like no to keep rebounding. Great. How is it to guard uh, Clifton Moore in the second half? Who? Nah. Um, <laughs> nah. I mean, it's a challenge, and I, I don't back down from no one as I've seen in previous games. So. Just attention to our scout. We do a good job giving us um, personnel. So just focus on what he like to do, what he like to do in certain areas, and just every time to let him score because we got to win this game. CJ, did you think you were going to be able to get that dunk down in, in the first half and have a contact? Yeah. Um, it's funny. I get those opportunities a lot in practice. He usually throws me the ball. This time today, I believe it was steady. Um, yeah, I actually did. Um, they, my teammates and my coach give me a lot for not dunking the ball because I'm really athletic. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess, Greg, when you guys saw it, because it, it seemed like the, the crowd responded to it, what was the team's response when he put it down like, like that? Well, I don't know if I could curse, but I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, no, nah, he, he does a lot in practice. Like, he, he can get up, but he always trying to do the fancy finger rolls and stuff. So, when he did it, it was like, yeah, now nah, he, he woke back up. Like you said, for this game, he was averaging like five points. And after that, I'm like, he's attacking aggressive. So he getting back in that mode. Greg, what did it do for the whole team's offense when you knocked down both those back-to-back threes? Oh, um, it just, I feel like it gave us more life. Because like we was winning early on and they, they fighting back. And I was like, oh, here they go. They want to run again. Then I hit my threes and everybody's back up. It like raised the tempo and made everybody want to play a little harder, you know? Well, another the, weapon. The energy of, of the team when they came back and started to tie because I think they, they had something that resembled momentum, but you know, what were you guys feeling? What was the energy like for you guys as they were coming back? Um, just keep playing. Just keep playing the right way. Just keep sharing the ball. You know, the game's all about runs, and they're going to make them. The goal is just to try to limit them. You know, they have a lot of runs, so just keep playing our game and just lock in more on the little things, the details. Mm-hmm. You guys on the bench have scored uh, LaSalle 35 to 6. That's a huge, huge margin there. And, um, you know, having not the best, I guess, of success off the bench in the last a few games, does it feel kind of relieving to have that confidence to go have these performances off the bench like this to relieve the starting line? Yeah, I, see, I feel like it definitely it builds our confidence and also the starters' confidence so that they got somebody to come back and keep the pace and keep the tempo up. And for me personally, it, it definitely builds confidence to know that, like, they don't got to do the heavy workload. We can also come in and keep the momentum up. So when we come out, it's still the same game. We're not down. What does having the balance you guys showed today do for the team? To, does it seem like everyone that was in was able to score? Um, I don't know. I just feel like this is no pressure for anybody just to always play well. You know, because we have a deep team, so it's just like, you know, if you feel like you don't have it going, just know your brother has your back. You know, so if I don't have it going, I know he's going to have it going. He doesn't have it going. I know Trent's going to have it going and throughout the whole team. So it's really a luxury to have. Greg, I, I don't know how much you can actually elaborate on it, but how does your hand feel? Because I know, <laughs> I think at one point McCall was going in for a high five and then had to, like, switch to the other hand or whatever, vice versa or anything like that. Um, so, yeah. You know what I mean? I sprained some ligaments in it on the St. Joe's game, but it's fine. It ain't broke, so next play, I'll be all right. All right, last one for the guys. Points in the paint. Uh, I asked McCall about it, too. What do you guys think it does for the team when uh, when you guys get it going in the paint and not just outside shooting? We're dangerous. Yeah, real scary. We're dangerous. I mean, I think that everyone knows that we can shoot the, shoot the three ball very well. So um, we get it going in the paint and on the outside. I mean, it's just like pick your poison at that time, really. Awesome. Thanks, guys. I appreciate y'all. Yeah.